They say it makes up less than 1% of the videos, but it gets like 80% of the attention. <laughs> um, what kind of borderline videos are we talking about here? Right, so Google in their blog post this morning, they gave us three examples. There was one, um, they said videos that uh, promise of cures for serious, fake cures for serious illnesses. Um, the other was Flat Earth, which is a conspiracy theory that has taken on a rem remarkably kind of reached pop culture level where you have like NBA stars and rap stars dropping the fact that they believe in a flat earth. Uh, this is a fascinating one. I mean, there are innumerable videos on YouTube about claiming that the earth is flat. Right. I think and, you know, this, it, a lot of people will say who worked at the company, uh, this isn't a new problem. They've had this for years. The third example is 9-11 conspiracy videos, and those have been, have been for, for almost as long as YouTube's been around. Um, I think what, what's happening that's new are two things. One, we're in this new climate. Uh, there's a lot of attention on both sides of the political aisle around tech. Uh, and Google has changed their recommendation algorithm in recent years, and they're starting to prioritize things like they want YouTube videos to be watched longer. Um, and they start to, they know that they keep people on the site, they keep people watching more videos. If while they're watching one video, they serve up another. Uh, and the problem they've had is that you kind of have this, like what's been deemed like the YouTube rabbit hole, where people will watch a certain video, they'll recommend it another, and they'll quickly go from something that's very slippery with the facts to something a flat out lie and misinformation, a conspiracy theory. And YouTube's been very reluctant to remove those from the sites because they don't they don't violate their policies. So now they've invented this new category called borderline videos that are not removed. They don't violate the policies. But they promise they're going to try to remove them from recommendations. Now, in the past, there's been you know some justification for leaving these videos on, like the flat earth videos. Who's that really hurting? Mm -hmm. but in general, like we want our policies to be about things that we can say can be black or white, things that can be easier for us to determine, like that is on the policy or it's not. Because if we are just suddenly saying, like, we believe this to be true, um, other, I mean, look, like, is the earth flat? Like, I think most people think it's flat. I mean, I think it's round. Them. But but there are people out there who think, who think it's flat. Um, and so really, like, our solution has been much more of, like, let's provide that right information for the users as opposed to us always being the ones saying, this is the way it is, let's police it that way. And if you banned everyone who believed the world was flat, I wouldn't be able to watch Celtics videos. Kyrie <laughs> Irving is one of the most prominent supporters of that view. As searching for the Earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of... Your response uh, is to put a box saying, nope, the Earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. YouTube says it's cracking down on hate speech and Holocaust deniers. KPI X5's Kit Doe says some big changes are in motion. To all the Nazi sympathizers, white supremacists, flat earthers, and Holocaust deniers, your days on YouTube are numbered. If you've never heard of the infamous American neo-Nazi group Adam Waffen Division, chances are you never will. The only mention of them now on YouTube is within news stories about them. How about Holocaust deniers? Search for Holocaust fake, and the first thing you see is a banner with facts about the genocide, followed by news reports from established, credible outlets about Holocaust deniers. The same goes for deniers of the Sandy Hook school shooting. There's now a link to Encyclopedia Britannica, followed by news coverage calling out deniers of the massacre. A massive change is underway at YouTube, and the debate of hate speech versus free speech is over with this announcement in their official blog. Quote, today we're taking an Another step in our hate speech policy by specifically prohibiting videos alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination, segregation, or exclusion based on qualities like age, gender, race, caste, religion, sexual orientation, or veteran status. Previously, YouTube only reduced their view count but still left the videos up. Today, they are mostly gone. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Gabrielle Antolovich is the president of the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Community Center in San Jose and says YouTube had emboldened hate speech for years. When you continue to allow hate speech out there, more people will do it. You know, if, um, if I'm a hater and I see it on YouTube, that gives me permission to hate more. YouTube is also taking aim at so-called borderline content, videos that spread mistruths like the earth is flat. The company is limiting recommendations to these videos and again is promoting authoritative content like news reports and documentaries about them. So the Flat Earth universe right now is so much bigger even than the Flat Earth Society. The internet has really democratized conspiracy theories and made it so that anybody can start their own YouTube channel, their own podcast.
Conspiracy videos are very, very lucrative online. They're so scintillating. If I see a video on YouTube with a crazy headline, something about flat earth, even though I don't believe in flat earth, I'm pretty uh, tempted to click on that. So because these videos overperform on social media, they often get artificially boosted by social media sites, algorithms, and a lot of very savvy people on YouTube, on Facebook, picked up on that and they said, okay, I'm gonna make the flat earth video because I know that's gonna bring me money. So there is a whole shadow ecosystem to uh, how people are engaging with flat earth, not necessarily because they believe in it. Some people do, some people are a little bit more cynical. And these people are realizing that if you make conspiracy content, you're probably gonna get some, some profit. That is such an important and, in retrospect, obvious point. It's the algorithms. This is yet another example of the algorithms creating a perverse incentive structure that leads to totally absurd places, promoting cults and conspiracy theories. That's true. And to YouTube's credit, they have, uh, in, I think, 2019, they started tinkering with the algorithm to delist flat earth videos. They realized we've got a, a real problem here. And now it's harder to find them. It's harder to accidentally stumble upon them. But to that end, I would say that the genie was already out of the bottle. Mm. These videos were everywhere for five years before they uh, tamped down on that algorithm. So yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's very hard to decouple the success of this conspiracy theory from the big tech companies that willingly or not made it really profitable. When we come back, you'll hear about how to get people out of conspiracy theories and cults, including, of course, the Flat Earth Society. I get that in cults and conspiracy theories, particularly in the online era, the community is self-reinforcing, especially when people feel rejected by the rest of society for their beliefs. But what's the appeal of this particular conspiracy theory? Why Flat Earth for these folks? I think for Flat Earth, it offers a whole vision of the, the universe. Another theory like um, mm. QAnon or chemtrails, well, that's just a little part of a conspiracy universe. It sort of fits alongside the accepted reality that most of us share. Flat Earth is almost like a religion in its totality. Mm. If you believe it, then you have a whole new worldview. And alongside that, you have a whole new set of friends and people who share your ideas. When you buy into Flat Earth, it brings you into this community. Your reporting also shows, though, this troubling overlap between the far right and the Flat Earthers. Explain. How does that work? So there's no inherent reason there should be so many Flat Earth Nazis, and yet there are a lot of Flat Earth Nazis. <laughs> flat I Earth think, Nazis? Yeah, yeah. We're talking fringe of the fringe. I think conspiracy theories are very powerful in uh, political extremist movements because they are looking for uh, alternative explanations. They're looking for often scapegoats for why they, um, why they feel disempowered, why they feel angry. I got to say, I didn't see Flat Earth Nazis coming. <laughs> Operation Paperclip smuggled hundreds of Nazi scientists, including top SS officers on trial for war crimes, into the United States for use in America's Cold War space race. One of these Nazi Party members, Werner von Braun, was promoted to head up NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Under Operation Paperclip, some 350 German scientists and former intelligence agents were given visas and well-paying jobs. Many of these scientists had questionable pasts. Braun himself had been an active member of the Nazi Party, and his colleague at NASA, Dr. Hubertus Strogold, a specialist in aviation medicine, had performed experiments on concentration camp inmates. The purpose of this massive and illegal undertaking appears to have been for the establishment of a worldwide authority on all things relating to space and astronomy. NASA became the public face of space. 
It has long acted as a front, providing an unsuspecting world with pseudoscience legitimized by the backing of the U.S. government. NASA is its own monopoly. It controls the dissemination of public information on astronomy while hiding facts it does not want the public to know. While many countries and universities have observatories, always it is the statements, photographs, and discoveries of NASA that make the news headlines. With NASA in charge of the flow of astronomical information to the public, it appears the Vatican has remained a central player in the truly accurate astronomy not being released to the public. For hundreds of years, the Vatican has owned more telescopes and observatories than any organization, private university, or government. NASA and the Vatican jointly own Lucifer, the world's largest binocular telescope. According to the official Vatican website, the Vatican Observatory is one of the oldest astronomical institutes in the world. And yet, where are the photographs? Where are the news releases of the latest discoveries? Precisely what have the Jesuit astronomers been doing for the last 500 years? Only they know. NASA's public release of information promoting the idea of an expanding, thus ever larger universe of incomprehensible size has led to the supposition there must be alien life on other planets. After all, if the Big Bang produced life on Earth, why couldn't intelligent life have evolved elsewhere? In combination with Hollywood and the science fiction genre, NASA has created an environment in which contact with extraterrestrial life forms is both fearful yet desirous. A recent book may hold the key to understanding the final steps in this long conspiracy to delude the final generation. Authors Tom Horn and Chris Putnam recently published a mind-boggling book in which they allege the Vatican actively seeks extraterrestrial life with their new Lucifer telescope. The book Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, Project Lucifer and the Vatican's astonishing plan for the arrival of an alien savior asserts the Vatican is waiting for an extraterrestrial savior. In researching their book, Horn and Putnam were granted permission to visit the observatory on Mount Graham, which hosts the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, VAT, in September 2012. Not only were they able to discuss the study of deep space with the Jesuit astronomers there, but they also gained access to one of the top Vatican astronomers in Rome. Horn said brother Guy Consolmagno, who has also been called the papal astronomer, told the authors some astounding information during five interviews. Um, a couple of years ago, I was asked to do a Bible study group. I'm thinking Catholics don't do Bible studies, you know. Mm. And to do a Bible study group in Houston. And Catholics definitely don't do Bible studies in Texas. Mm. To do a Bible study group in Houston with a bunch of astronauts. Astronauts, oh, I could do that, yeah. So I wound up at a, at a dinner evening of about 12 couples, all of them astronauts or, and spouses. One of the guys, half of them were Catholic as it turns out, so so much for Catholics not doing Bible studies. One of the guys um, came up to me and said, you know, I just want to let you know, I believe in the absolute truth that creation was made in the six days just as described in the book of Genesis. And that's my religion, I just want to let you know that ahead of time. And I'm thinking, you know, have you actually read Genesis? Where it says the world is flat and it's covered with a dome and there's water above and below the dome, you know. Where does the shuttle go? How come you don't get wet? <laughs> <laughs>